Hey everybody, this is Tyler Tapper. So happy to be with you guys here today. We are going to do the fourth and final installment of getting these shelves done. If anyone missed parts one through three, I'm going to link them down below. You can see how I got to this point. But now what we're going to do is just continue hanging the shelves on here. So using tree branches on here, nothing is at an exact right angle. So I had to deal with a lot of kind of weird, funny intersecting angles and I just had to do it by eye, put it up there test fit it, carve into a little bit, uh, fit it again. I'm trying to make a little bit of a shelf for these, again, so it's stronger, so you can see I'm carving down in there, making a flat piece for it to rest on. On the right side, you can see I stacked up that paint can and some uh, tape, and that's just so I can keep it level and make sure that I'm hitting it at the exact right spot. On this side of the shelf, there's going to be four branches coming up through, so I'm drilling out the majority of the material with the Forstner bit. Come back with a saw, get those little legs cut off the edge there. You're going to see there's going to be a little bit of uh, interference between these two branches, so I have to come back in and carve out a little bit of that. I want to make them kind of mold and mesh in together. I'm going to continue to use some dowel pins to give it extra strength. Going in here, and how you do it is you put these little pokey things in first, and then you just press the two pieces together, and that transfers where you need to drill the hole on the other side. After the holes are drilled, it's a test fit and then a glue up. For the third upright, with how this branch curved, I couldn't get into the bottom shelf and use the Forstner bit to make a hole, so I decided to cut into the upright. Uh, that piece of tape you saw me use was representative of how thick the board was that it needed to fit inside. So I just went back in there with the saw, cut a couple of channels, and chiseled it out. Off camera, I went back and scraped all this bark off and did some sanding of it just to get it to ready to paint. And then it was uh, rinse and repeat from the other one I did. More dowel holes, more glue, fitting it in there and clamping it into dry. So a little closer detail of where those two branches were interacting. And the whole thing I was playing with, just kind of how stuff was coming together naturally and kind of trying to smooth things off and make them go into each other. Uh, so just rounding this one off on the front. With all the joints done on the other side, I'm putting some dowel pins in this one. Same process, getting those little pokey things in there. Then I can transfer the points over where I need to drill up into the shelf. Gave everything overnight to dry so it was good and solid before I started working on everything again. Uh, now this middle board is going to go all the way up through to the top and I'm going to anchor it into all three shelves. What I'm carving in right now is I'm carving in a little relief so the branch that's jutting out is also going to come in and tie into this upright. Um, there's only going to be one in the middle so I wanted it to be really strong and really solid. With all the other levels, it was relatively easy to work with a piece of wood because they're pretty small, pretty light. This one's a really long section though, I mean it's at least five feet, so I had to figure out how to 
suspend it so I could eyeball exactly where I was going to put all the cuts into all these uprights and exactly where I wanted it to sit on top of the shelf. All the uprights are going to end up being at different levels so you just tied it to that rafter on the top to suspend it. I had to end up adjusting the angle of how this one was going to sit just again so it would hit that top shelf the right way doing dowel pins for the top and bottom. I'm going to use two different types of glue here and why I use the epoxy and the wood glue is the tight joints. I'm using wood glue and the ones where there's going to be a little bit of a gap. I'm using that epoxy so it'll fill it in. The wood glue has to have a really kind of tight bond. There's not much strength in the actual glue. So I made this contraption. I don't know exactly what you would even call it, but I put two squares together so they formed a a triangle on their base and that way I could put that little marker there and this would give me a reference to make sure all the cuts in the top piece were level so that top shelf would sit level compared to everything else. Now that I knew exactly where the board was going to sit I could trim it down to its final size. What I'm doing here is putting a weight onto the end of the rope that way I can make sure it doesn't go over the edges of where the base is. I'm just going back through and cutting off the excess. Using a similar method that I used with the upright on the other side, I'm coming in. Those marks that I made, I'm going to saw along the bottom and then make two more cuts uh, above that. That way I can come back with a chisel and easily knock out the part of the wood that I need to remove. I had these calipers set to the height of the wood that was going to be sliding in there just so I knew exactly how high I had to remove. After a test fit with it, it all looked like it was level and lining up right, and it was time to start making the supports for the right side. Again, I'm coming in with a Forstner bit to remove the bulk of the material for those uprights and then I'm going to grab a saw to get the edges cut off. Carving another one of those interference fits for the upright and then I'm going to come back and make the next hole coming up through the top piece. This one had kind of a little bit of a funny bend at the end of it, so it was a little bit interesting to carve out the shelf to get it all fit together. You had to remove a lot more material on one side than the other. The fit on the top wasn't as precise, that's why I'm using epoxy, and it was just a matter of if I had so many joints going together at once. There's what, one, two, three, four on here, so getting them all to line up, just the tolerances were a little bit bigger, so that epoxy will fill in the gaps and still give it the strength. Again, with those gaps being a little bit bigger, this is sawdust. I use big wood shavings and little wood shavings. Uh, put them all together with that epoxy again, and this way I can fill in the gaps that were a little bit too big for my liking. The top shelf is finally freestanding and uh, strong in there. Again, going back and reinforcing it and adding some more uprights to it. I went through, I drilled almost all the way through the top and then came up through the bottom and that's a way that you can prevent any blowout on the bottom. That's where the grain will just kind of separate because you're drilling down and pushing through at the very end of the hole. Obviously that'd be pretty unsightly if it was on there, so did everything I could to avoid it. Especially at this point in the project, the stakes always seem so high if you have a mishap when it's being so close to done. One of the things the customer wanted for these is to have a place where they could hang some shirts and some merchandise like that, so I'm making a rack that they'll be able to hang the stuff on here. She had mentioned not knowing if they were going to have those on here or not, so I wanted to make it so you could remove this rack and it wouldn't be too unsightly and have anything just hanging there. 
to that end what I did is I'm countersinking the top so that if these are removed you will still see the hole in the bottom but it shouldn't be that big or too noticeable. A reoccurring theme of having a little bit of a hard time with placement of everything with everything being so organic and curvy so I'm going through just putting the bar in there seeing where it looks right and tracing around it. After I traced around it, I, drew, I drilled a very small hole up through the middle of that mark, and that way I would have a reference on the top so I would know exactly where it came through. Then going through and countersinking it so that that bolt will sit flush, and drilling the hole through for the eye bolt. I'm not exactly sure where the footage went, but I did go back in and add some more supports that went in between all those uprights on the right hand side. Um, yeah, lost in the archive somewhere. Anyway, coming back through, getting everything sanded down smooth and flat before I came back and applied some finish. I'm using just a typical semi-gloss uh, polyurethane for the wood, figured it would hide the smudges a little bit better. After all the first coats were done, I came back down and I had to sand everything down just to rough it up so the next coats would stick. I went back through and I did about, I think it was three or four coats on here, just to make sure it was all good and protected and was going to hold up well. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to come and watch my video today. I really appreciate it. Again, if you missed any of the previous videos, I will link them all in the description below. As always, I'd love it if you could smash that like button below, and if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to do that so you don't miss any updates coming up. And I'll just leave you here with a few beauty shots of the finished product.